Hi friends, it's Deanna here and welcome to my channel. Once again, we're doing a V-vlog of what I've got going on today. Um, I did this a couple days ago and it was so fun. So I figured I'd do it again and I go, I'm go. i gonna go through some of the things that I've done today, which can be really helpful. I do plan to share like a little short on what I just did today because I should have filmed what I did and maybe I will film it again whenever I do it again. Um, but what I did today already was clean my cutting mats. I don't know if, I don't know why I get down on my knees, like maybe you can see me better if I do this. Hi! Um, I don't know if everybody's mats get so fluffy. Uh, of course, cutting all this like fluffy fabric, the fibers get into the mat and the mats are self-healing, but um, they still kind of capture all the fluff. Well, um, I should have already been doing this because my mat clearly says, let me show you, um, it says clean with warm water and mild detergent, but I just, it never clicked. I never did it. I never done it. Today, I put my mat into my bathtub, well, my son's bathtub, and I added some little mild soap and some water, warm water, and I scrubbed it, and it looks almost brand new. It looks so good. I did both of them. I did this one a little more than this one. And I probably should have done more uh, because I still see some of the fuzz, but it's not anything like it was. So I bet if I did it on a consistent basis, my mats will look so, so good. So next time I do it again, I'm going to show you, but I will add this short, probably if it's not added already, because I don't know when this video will post, um, I'll probably post it like tomorrow, which is probably yesterday for today I don't know anyway but uh, yeah I cleaned it all I did was put it in this in the tub put a little bit of soap scrubbed it with a brush and then I dried it with a towel and that's it and it looks so good comment below and let me know do you clean your cutting mats let me know uh, am I the only one to realize or ever do this at like that hasn't ever done it before I've had mats forever and I just have never done it before so that was really cool. So if you're not doing it, you can you can do it. You can so wash it. Let me show you. If you get closer to my mats, look at how good they look. Like barely any fuzz. You should have seen that before. Maybe I'll add a picture here if I remember. But um, look, if you look at, whoop, sorry, if you look right there, focus. It says clean with warm water and mild detergent. Look at it. Just look at it. Looks so, so good. Anyway, if you are not doing it, you definitely should. So today we are working. I wanted to show you. Oh, no, this is not what I wanted to show you. This is actually my editing stuff. I wanted to show you I'm working on a pattern today. Um, last time we talked a little bit about projector files. And I wanted to show you something. My camera is not focusing. Um, okay, so I wanted to show you this because the reason why I came on here is because this pattern does not have a projector file. Um, so you will run across this when you are uh, sewing f uh, patterns. Some of them do not offer projector files yet. They're, you know, making projector files can be kind of hard for a designer. Um, it takes a while to change all your projector, all your files to projector files, so you really, really can't expect everybody to have it done already. It's fairly a new thing, projectors, so uh, I'm turning on my projector right now. Um, it's fairly a new thing, so some of them have AO files, A0 files, which are the files that you can print from a shop. So like, you can go to uh, Office Max or whatever, I don't know, like different shops that print AO files. So I'm going to use an AO file today to project my and cut my fabric because the projection is going to be the same size. The only thing about an AO file, and I'm going to pull up, see if I kept, I, guess I might have erased it. Okay, here's a, here's a projector file. Let me, okay, here's the layers. Remember we talked about that. I'm going to take off all these layers and let me show you what the difference big difference between AO file and a projector file. So this is a projector file. And if you can see, there's all this rim around this file. So if I zoom to 17.9, which is my fit, look at that. I can move it around so much. 
and position it on my table wherever I want. You see that? So like when it's reflecting to my table, whoops, sorry. We'll answer later. When it's reflecting to my table, I can move it anywhere I want to. You see that? But with a uh, AO file, you can't do that. It's just a simple file. There's no room around it. And that's the main part that can be kind of hard to work with an AO file, but I'm going to show you how I do it. Some people uh, have apps that they use, like um, it's called uh, uh, PF, PDF Stitchery, I think it's called, or different um, apps, but I don't have time to learn a new app, so I'm just going to do it right on here. I'm going to show you how. Let me go answer that call and I'll come back. All right, I'm back. So what I'm doing instead of doing the um, projector file is the AO file and I'm going to show you. So I'm plugging in my projector to project onto my newly cleaned mat, which I'm so excited about. And I'm going to turn you so you can see the projection to my mat. Okay, here we go. All right, so what I like to do is, first of all, the projection is there, and if I can fit it where my mat is, which this one is pretty close, yeah, it looks like I can fit it where my mat is. So this one's okay. But sometimes you can't because of the fact that it may be too tall and not, like you have some room down here. You, have, you may have some room down at the bottom, but not enough room at the top. What I do in that case is I make my window bigger. That's one option. When you make your window bigger, if you can see, I'm gonna show you my projection here. Put my fabric so you can see, really see it. Fabric goes this way. This is a flannel that I got from Joanne Fabrics. Okay, and so you can, you can see, ooh, that looked like a spider for a second there. I was like, oh! Okay, um, when I maximize my screen, I'm gonna point you right there. See how you can see the whole projection? I'm gonna minimize my screen now. Just hit minimize on my screen now. See how it kind of moved down a little bit? Maximize it again, moves up a little bit. So that gives me a little bit of room, so there's that. Sorry, I'm making lunch. And so then another thing that I do, um, I minimize my screen again. And I'm gonna bring you over here so you can see what I'm talking about. And then I grab my screen and move it around. So if I, act, if I need to move my pattern pieces, instead of moving the, the, the picture, I'm moving the actual, uh, what is it called? Window, my actual window. I'm gonna show you as I'm moving my window. As I'm moving my window, whoop, grab my window. As I'm moving it, all the reflection also moves on my mat. So this allows me to move it a little bit, even though the pattern is not really moving. You see what I'm saying? So if I needed to move it for any reason, I can move it. So that's good. So I like to do that. Uh, another thing that will help that is, I showed you in the last video, that you can also, oh, another thing, yeah, another thing is, you can get rid of windows, like the little pop-ups, so you can get rid of that, which moves your projection more over to the left, or if you're like, oh, you know, I kind of did want to have that, then, you know, you can, yeah, you can move this guy out of the way as well, and you can move it sideways. If you wanted to have move it more to the left, you can add this window here, which is the uh, layers, and that will move it more towards the left. So, I mean, there's just little things that you can do to move this around to make sure that you move it to fit into your mat. Well, I am taking a little break from my sewing to make a lunch. And today I'm making, uh, well, I say I, but my son really started it. He's trying to finish some classwork now while I stir this up. But um, macaroni and cheese, and we have some pulled pork that we made for dinner last night. So we're gonna make some pulled pork over macaroni and cheese, which is delicious. So it's gonna be like a, it's like pulled pork nachos, but all macaroni and cheese. So that's what 
what we're having for lunch today. What? Comment below and let me know what you're having for lunch today. So I'm going to heat this up. I'm going to go heat up my pork. And uh, yeah, I'm going to have lunch. And then we'll get back to sewing. All right, back to cutting. One thing I wanted to mention is a lot of patterns have what is like a line showing you the size of the pattern. And one good thing to do is always to measure that line. So it's projected to my mat and I measured it and it measures perfectly. So I know that my projection is the correct size. So now I'm gonna go ahead and start cutting my pattern. Um, I really do need to get some more rotary cutters. I feel like mine are so stinking dull. Also, I am making for this pattern, I'm making two different sizes. I'm making a size eight for the bodice. So I'm gonna close that out and make a size eight for the bodice. And then I'm gonna make a size, oh no. I was supposed to be caught and fold. Mm. Okay. That says fold right there, so I'm just going to move this over and see if I can salvage. No, it's not quite big enough to salvage. I'm going to have to do something else. Probably another piece will go on there. It's fine. So, pay attention to what your fabric says to do. I mean, your, your pattern says to do. I was kind of going ahead and rushing to, to do it while I was had you and I thought... There's two pieces, so I was like, oh, they're mirrored. No, they're not mirrored. This is the front piece here. I have to cut two of them. Okay. Yeah, so I'm cutting a size smaller for the bodice because I'm a size medium on top and then a size large on my bottoms so I'm gonna cut I'm gonna actually cut a size 8 for my top and a size 10 for my bottoms and I may they may be a little big and if they are that's okay I can always take out so here's the front and then now I gotta do the back which is on the fold so I'm just gonna move this right over because it's already folded. On the fold means that you, and oh, okay, so here I'm gonna show you. If you wanna have the seams match up, this is my side seam here. I would place it like kind of on top and make sure that it lines up with my projection so that they can match up when I go to sew them, so. I'm gonna pull it up a little bit. I think that's pretty good. So I'm gonna cut here. Oh, wait a minute. First I gotta make this fold line. I'm gonna have to measure again. Okay, so the fold line is here. So that's right. Fold right there. But I need, I'm gonna place it right on top so I can see where my line is here. I need to go down a little bit because I want it to be where it's supposed to be, right there. Now it's not going to match because the print is different and I could move it down more and match it but then I'll be using up more fabric and I don't really love doing that so I'm just going to, if it doesn't match completely on the side it's fine. It's a PJ so it will be fine, right? I need to get new rotary cutters. These are so dull, but I just never do. I always forget to. All right, so there is my bodice front and back. So I got that. I'm just gonna scroll down and what is that? Waistband, pant ruffle, Back facing. Just kind of trying to see what they all are. Front ruffle. So I'm not gonna do the pocket, so I gotta cut the front ruffle. Here's the sleeve. 
There's the pant, but I'm not going to do the pant. Front facing. I'm going to do the shorts. Pocket. Oh, the short is the cut line right there. So it's the same thing. Okay. I needed to see what they all were. Put them back to the size that they're supposed to be. So that's the pant ruffle. Oh, I gotta look at the picture and see if I need the pant ruffle. Okay, so I don't need the pant ruffle, I need the short ruffle. So I'm gonna have to look and see if there is a short ruffle, if it's just the same thing. Pant ruffle, front ruffle, pocket ruffle. So that should be the pant and the shorts ruffle. Yeah, I think that's what it is. This is the ruffle for the top. And those are the pockets. Uber pajama pants pocket. Pants facing. Okay. Now that I know what they are, I need to cut everything except for Yeah, but let's cut the facing first. And the reason why I'm cutting is because I want to cut all the all the things for the bodice first because of the sizing. How many do I need to cut of that? That's the only thing I don't like. It's having to zoom in one interfacing and one regular. Command Y, 17.9. 17 and let's cut that out. So we're just gonna cut one of these because it's one of these and one in interfacing. So I'll cut the interfacing in a little bit. All right. So I've got the bodice, the bodice, the bodice. I need to get the sleeves and the ruffle, the bodice. Front ruffle. Did we say that was a pocket ruffle? Yeah, so that's the front ruffle here. I need to cut two. Should I cut it this way? It's not the right way to cut, but I would be saving some fabric where I made the, the mess up. I hope I have enough fabric. I think I have enough fabric because I'm just making shorts. So I think it'll be fine cut this way. Fold it over to create both. All right. So I've got one here, two, because it's folded over. put it right where the crease is where my two mats co collide all right here we go this is a ruffle now one of the things that you can do um, to kind of keep track of what pieces they are if, if they're kind of similar, if this is the top ruffle. You just use some tape, painter's tape, and then keep it together. Where are my clips? Then I can clip the pieces together. That way they stay together. Alright, so I've got, I'm going to do my sleeves because I'm going to try to move them over by creating this, adding the menu and I moved them over. So now I've got my sleeve right here moved over to the side because I opened up that menu. So now I can probably use 
Well, it's supposed to go like this. Oh, no, yeah. Okay. You can use this side. So if this is the right side, there we go. Supposed to go the other way, but we're just gonna cut this loop this way, and it'll have a different what do you call it? Feel. Ah, oh, I forgot to mark my back and my front, so I'm gonna have to put clip where the back is here. So that's my back. Okay. So now I'm gonna cut it this way because they're supposed to be facing each other, right sides together. Like opposite, I'm sorry, mirrored. So I wanna make sure that they are mirrored, so I'm gonna cut it this way. And I'm gonna cut it as close to over here, leaving this area here in case I need it for later, which I don't think I do, but. Wait a minute, no, this is, uh, went too far down. It's hard to tell because I guess I, sh I could change the colors of my lines. The, con the colors of the lines are green. This is the back, so I'm gonna, no, this is not the back. This is the, yeah, this is the back. Um, the color of my lines are green and this uh, fabric has a little bit of a green line to it. So sometimes when they are like right next to each other, it confuses me, like there's a little green line here. Anyway this aside okay so I've got sleeves I got ruffle I've got all that close that out I need the front facing and that is what is that the color and the front facing so I need two front facings and I need two colors anything else pocket back ruffle oh here's the shorts ruffle okay so I don't need that pant ruffle so I'm done with this let's see I feel like I'm done with this top part I did that oh I need the waistband I did the front ruffle I don't need the pant ruffle I don't need the pocket ruffle I did the sleeve so I need the shorts ruffle I need to cut the shorts I don't need the pocket I need the back ruffle for the PJ so that I'm gonna cut that one next because that one oh I need to make it my size that one I need because that's gonna be the back and that one's on the fold the front wasn't on the fold because of the fact that it was two pieces because it's a it's a, uh, whatever you call it, um, two sides. But this is on the fold because it's the back. All right, so there it is. Where is it? Right there. All right, so I'm gonna fold in half. Let's go this way. And the fold line is on this side, but that's okay because since it's a rectangle, it's okay that I fold it either way. Just make sure your fabric is nice and even, which mine wasn't just now. All right, this is the back ruffle. For the bodice, the only thing missing is that piece right there. Where'd it go? Right here. This is the facing for the front, and I need two of them. I'm gonna just fold it down to match them. <coughs> and 
And then all I'll have to cut next is the bottoms. This one took a little bit longer to cut because there's more pieces to it. And I get so confused sometimes when there's a lot of pieces. Like, not confused, but I'm like, I keep going back and forth like, how many did I need? Did I need to cut one? Did I need to cut two? Did I need to cut a bunch? I get so confused. Okay, so that's the front facing. We can get rid of this. Ah, we need the color. So this one, I'm going to move the projection whoop, up a little bit by minimizing the screen and moving the projection up so that it will fit. I don't think it'll fit in this little piece of fabric or in this little piece of fabric. It's a little bit bigger than that. Let me make sure it's still 17.9. Sometimes I get afraid that it's going to change on me. I don't know why, but I do, and I don't want it to. All right, let's see, is this big enough? I, as you can see, like to say, oh, I can use this for my pocket. So I'm gonna save that for my pocket. I like to use pretty much every scrap piece for my pattern. I don't like to waste fabric, so I try to always look for every piece I can use. This is my color. I need two of them. One. Two. The other one's gonna face up because it's right sides together. So I'm gonna. That's not big enough. I'm gonna save it for the pocket, and then I'm gonna grab another piece from over here. I really just need the shorts. So I hope we can all fit in here. I'm gonna be really sad if I cut all this out and I can't fit the shorts. But I think you can. the final pieces it's the shorts and I want the shorts to be I'm gonna open my where did it go where did my layers go here it is I'm gonna open size layer 10 for my bottoms because I want them to be a little bit bigger so here's my front All right, now for the pants, they're kind of upside down here. That's fine because I've got two pieces to do, but they're not gonna fit all in here. I'm just gonna have to fold it. My short line. That is that the short line? Yeah, that's the short line there. Okay. Facing each other. If I have to make the ruffle going the other way, that's fine. I mean, it's not ideal, but it'll be okay. All right, there's the front short. Remember, there's a ruffle at the bottom of it, so it'll be a little bit longer than that, but I like shorts for sleeping in. Uh, then here's the shorts ruffle. I'll do that in a minute. The pocket, this is the back ruffle. We did that, we did that with shorts back. I don't think they fit in here. In fact, I'm pretty sure they don't fit in here, so I'm gonna have to, I wonder if they'll fit this way. We'll see. Not really. So, we're gonna go this way. Ooh, we're getting short on fabric. We still need pockets. I did save all the other scraps, so hopefully, as long as I can get the shorts out of this fabric, the ruffle I can get on the sides and stuff like that. Okay, so here's the short. So 
there's my shorts back. I feel like I cut that weird. I'm gonna fix it here. Like this part here. There we go. All right, so there's my shorts back. All right, now for the last few things, it's my pockets, my two pockets. Again, I'm gonna minimize that and make it smaller so I can move it up. There's my two pockets. I put this aside because I'm gonna use the scraps for the pockets. <laughs> Almost done cutting. And then I'm gonna sew it up and then I'm gonna show you the final result. Now this one is a paid pattern. This is not a free pattern. Um, but I had this pattern, I've had it for a while, and I had this fabric and I was like, you know what? I need to make it. It's been a while. It needs to be made. Oh, I cut it at the allowance line. I cut it at the seam allowance line. Okay. Well, hopefully I have more scraps because I cut that wrong. Let's see. Here is another pocket, please. I have just enough to create the pocket on this one. pocket bag it's not coming out of any of that or these these are little tiny pieces I just need to be thrown away let's see if it fit in this one nope all right we're gonna wait on that because I want to do my ruffles make sure that I have enough for my pant ruffle there's one right there and my waistband. So here's my waistband. I wanna go ahead and make my waistband. Where are you? Right here. And then we'll make the pocket. Waistband. I need two because it's cut on fold and I don't know that I have long enough fabric to cut it on fold. I don't. So I'm going to have to cut two of them. Oh my goodness, I'm running a really low on fabric. Right here. It might be here, it might be long enough. If I run out of fabric, what I'll do is I'll just do, like, maybe I can find another fabric that kind of matches it and do like the pockets a different fabric and that will be fine because it's just pockets you won't be able to really see the pockets they are going to be on the inside so that's what i'll do if i can't find if i can't fit them in here i'm always trying to get like the last little bit of fabric that i can so that's the last little bit this way yeah i think i'm gonna have to cut it into two pieces If I do that, if I'm gonna cut it into two pieces, I'm gonna, I'll am gonna i just have to add a little bit of seam allowance, like a, a quarter to a half an inch seam allowance, so that when I sew them together, it's still just as long as I need it to be, because it's not meant to be into two pieces. So I'm gonna cut it into two pieces and add a seam allowance so that it'll fit. And I think the only thing I got left to do is the uh, shorts ruffle at the bottom of the shorts and the pocket. Here I am leaving a little bit of seam allowance here. There we go. And I'm gonna mark it waistband. All right, I'm gonna go sew this up. Find, see if I can find anything else matching it. Sew this up, come back and show it to you all when it's finished. Waistband. Thank you for cutting with me. <laughs> this is kind of fun uh, coming on here and just cutting. I know that it's not everybody's video and that's okay. 
Um, if you're not here for this, you know, that's fine. You can come back and watch the other kind of videos that are more for you than this video, and that's fine. I'm gonna view, rotate the view, I just wanna tell you that. <clears throat> rotate the view here for me to get that ruffle. More very pajamas short ruffle, here it is. Okay, um, but yes, so if you can't, if you, you know, you're like, well, I don't really like watching this type of video, it's not my content, it's not for me, that's fine. I'm just here because I thought it was fun to come on here and sew with you all. And so I figured I'd go ahead and sew with you all. But um, anyway, that's it. I'm gonna go finish cutting this up. Uh, not so, uh, uh, cut with you all. And maybe I'll come back and kind of show you a little bit of my sew when I'm actually sewing. But um, yeah, thank you for hanging around. Um, I'll be posting more content of actual sewing tutorials here coming up. This was just a little bit of a break. All right, bye. All right, friends, we are done with this sew. It turned out so good. I was able to stripe match my bodice, but not my shorts. I like the little ruffle that goes around them. And I think I'm, I did get some more fabric from Joanne that was a Christmas fabric. So I do think I'm gonna make a Christmas uh, PJ because this turned out really well. I did end up making the size eight for the bodice and the size 10 for the shorts. Um, and the fit was really, really spot on. I did on my um, Instagram channel, showed a little, a few tips and tricks about buttons and stuff. And I hope to turn those maybe into some shorts and I can share them with you here. Um, I added the buttons already. And I had a lot of comments of people on my Instagram saying that this top could be worn like with jeans and it'd just be like a really cute top, like this pattern top. And so anyway, I think it turned out really cute. So if you're looking for a cute Christmas PJ maybe, this would be a good option. I'll add the information to this pattern on the description box below. It is not a free pattern. Um, and again, it doesn't have the, uh, the projector file, but I already showed you how you can get around that. Anyway, I hope this video was helpful. Comment and let me know what you think. And um, subscribe if you haven't. I'll see you all next time. Bye.